If you talk to yourself, congratulations, you might be smarter than 95% of people who think it's crazy. Most of us have been conditioned to hide it. We whisper under our breath in the grocery store. We catch ourselves mid-sentence and look around to see if anyone noticed. Society has convinced us that talking to ourselves is the first sign we're losing it. But here's what neuroscience reveals. Self-talk isn't a quirk. It's how the most intelligent people think. Einstein did it. Serena Williams does it in the middle of championship matches. Steve Jobs was famous for walking around Apple's campus having full conversations with himself. Here's what Harvard discovered. Your brain doesn't just process self-talk as noise. It's a powerful cognitive tool that rewires how you solve problems. But there's a catch. There's a specific way to talk to yourself. Do it wrong, and you're just muttering. Do it right using a technique called distanced self-talk that LeBron James uses in high-pressure moments. And you can reduce emotional reactivity by 40%. By the end of this video, I'm going to show you the exact three-step protocol to turn your internal monologue into your brain's secret weapon, the science. Let's start with what's actually happening in your brain when you talk to yourself. MIT researchers discovered something fascinating. When you think silently, you're using primarily your language centers. But when you verbalize, even just whispering or moving your lips, you activate your language centers, your auditory cortex, and your motor cortex simultaneously. You're creating what neuroscientists call neural redundancy. Multiple brain regions processing the same information through different channels. The result? A 12 to 15% improvement in performance on complex tasks. That's not marginal. That's the difference between good and exceptional. But here's the more important finding from the University of Wisconsin. Self-talk creates a gap. When you verbalize what you're thinking, you create a half-second delay between impulse and action. That tiny gap allows your prefrontal cortex, your rational brain, to override your amygdala, your emotional, reactive brain. Decision researcher Gary Klein found that experts aren't faster at deciding. They're better at narrating what they observe. Now here's where it gets really interesting. University of Michigan psychologist Ethan Cross discovered what he calls the distanced self-talk effect. When you talk to yourself in the third person, David needs to focus on this. Instead of first person, I need to focus, your brain processes it differently. It's not ego or delusion. Your brain treats it like advice from someone else. This reduces emotional reactivity by 40%. LeBron James uses this technique. In high-pressure moments, he's been caught on camera asking himself, what would LeBron do here? He's not talking about himself in third person because he's arrogant. He's creating psychological distance from the pressure, the types. So if self-talk rewires your brain, the question is, what kind of self-talk actually makes you smarter? First, problem-solving self-talk. This is what it sounds like. Okay, what do I know? What don't I know? If X is true, then Y should happen. Wait, that doesn't make sense because... You're not just thinking. You're externalizing your working memory. A Stanford study of surgeons found that those who narrated their procedures, I'm cutting here because I need to avoid this artery, made 25% fewer errors than surgeons who worked in silence. Why? Because your brain treats your voice as a second opinion. When you hear yourself say something out loud, you catch errors you'd miss if it stayed internal. Einstein would explain problems to himself for hours. He called them thought experiments spoken, not thought, spoken. Second, motivational self-talk, but you're probably doing it wrong. Research from the University of Illinois found that second-person self-talk, you can do this, beats first person, I can do this, by 15% in actual performance. 
Serena Williams doesn't say, I got this, in crucial moments. She says, come on, Serena. She's coaching herself like she'd coach someone she believes in. But here's the mistake. Generic cheerleading doesn't work. You got this is weak. You've practiced this backhand a thousand times. That's powerful. Specificity activates memory and competence. Third, reflective self-talk. Ray Dalio, one of the most successful investors in history, records himself talking through major decisions. Then he replays them and asks, What did I miss? What was I feeling? An MIT study found that people who verbally review their decision-making process improve by 23% over six months. Silent reflection gives you half that benefit. The protocol. Knowing the science is useless if you don't have a system. You don't want to just walk around muttering randomly. Here is the exact three-step protocol to install this into your daily routine without looking crazy. Step 1. Narration for complex tasks. Describe what you're doing as you do it. I'm reading this paragraph about neural networks. The key point is that layers process information hierarchically. Narration keeps your attention anchored. It prevents your mind from wandering while your eyes keep moving. You know that thing where you read three paragraphs and retain nothing. Step 2. Questioning for problem solving. Turn statements into questions. Don't say, this doesn't work. Ask, why doesn't this work? What am I assuming that might be wrong? Questions force your brain into search mode. Statements let you stay stuck. Step 3. Third-person coaching for pressure. Use your name. Okay, Sarah. What's the smart move here? What would you tell a friend to do? This creates instant objectivity. You're not drowning in the emotion. You're advising someone you care about who happens to be you. Here's the one rule that makes all of this work. Self-talk has to be specific and externalized. Vague internal mumbling, ugh, this is hard, does nothing. Clear verbal articulation, even if it's whispered, that's what rewires the neural pathways. And here's what smart people don't do. They don't suppress self-talk in public. Suppressing it costs cognitive energy. You're spending mental resources on looking normal instead of solving the problem. They don't judge the content. The moment you critique your own self-talk that sounds stupid, you kill the flow. And they don't rush it. The point isn't to think faster. It's to think better. Here's the stupidity trap. Most people silence their self-talk because they're afraid of looking crazy. The irony? That silence makes them less capable of handling complex thought. Carl Jung said the unconscious speaks to you constantly. Self-talk is you speaking back. It's not crazy. It's consciousness in action. So here's the intelligence marker. Next time you catch yourself working through a problem out loud, don't apologize. You're doing what every elite performer does, thinking the way the brain is actually designed to think. Most people will keep suppressing this because they care more about looking normal than being effective. You won't. That's the difference. Your self-talk isn't a flaw. It's a feature.